Hi everyone, I'm Julia Bartoli. As you can see, I'm in Rome. And I want to ask you a question. What is the first thing you would do if you see a monument like this behind me? I'm sure you all answered, I would take a picture, and that's what I would do too. This is the amazing thing about uh, pictures, that you can capture a moment, something that you like, and take it with you forever. And this is why cameras have become an, uh, an essential thing in our life. But who, who knows how they really work? And this is what I will try to explain in my podcast, so keep watching. The first camera used to be just a dark chamber called Camera Obscura, where the artist would project the image on a canvas and then would draw the outlines of the scene. The cameras really started to change in 1900, when there was no more need of an artist. The camera is light proof, but when you take the picture it lets in an amount of light necessary. When the light is not enough, the flash goes on. The most common type of camera is the single lens reflex that is composed of two pairs of lenses. A mirror that allows the light coming from the object to be reflected. The light then goes through a pentaprism that leads it toward the eye. When the picture is taken, the mirror closes so that the light, instead of going to the pentaprism, goes into the film. Then there is the twin lens camera that uses two different lenses one for the eye and one for taking the picture. The lens is a very simple curved glass. Through the lens passes the light, bouncing off the object that is wished to be photographed. The light is then redirected to form the exact same scene as the one the person who's taking the picture sees. Your next question would be, how is that possible? As we know, uh, light goes faster through air than through glass. So when the wave light reaches the lens, uh, a part is going to start going slower than the other one who's still in the air part. So the difference of speeds here is going to cause the bending of the light, of the wave light, sorry, uh, into the lens. I found a really nice example to illustrate the situation here. And it's when you push um, a shopping cart, you push it through a pavement, through pavement part, and then you reach a grass part. And of course this, this wheel is going to start going slower than this one who's still in the pavement. The, the difference of speeds here now it's going to cause the turning of the cart and the same happens here and of course the bending is going to happen again when the, the wave light is going to reach the, the, the end of the glass so it's going to exit the, um, the, the, the lens uh, because here it's going to start going faster the waves then reach the film and we get the same shapes as, but in different dimensions and with opposite sides so it will be upside down and the right will become the left and vice versa the film of the camera is the chemical part, because as light reaches its light-sensitive grains, they start a chemical reaction to record the image. The film would then become the negatives, used to, de to then to develop the pictures. This is why in all cameras we couldn't expose the film to light before taking the picture. Thanks for watching! Hi, sorry, can you take a picture please?